we are going to start now the next lecture lecture 9 of chapter 5 class 11th mathematics complex numbers and quadratic equations in this lecture we will study some applications of complex numbers in coordinate geometry so the first thing we are going to discuss over here it is the distance firm so suppose we are talking about two points p and q and are there and the fix of those two points they are z1 and z2 p is z1 and q is corresponding to the complex number z2 so we are saying p is the coordinates x comma y q has the coordinate x1 comma y1 q has the coordinates x2 comma y2 then the distance between these two we know it is given by the formula square root of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square this is from the coordinate geometry we know this thing so this thing we can write this is equal to the mod of z2 minus z1 so we are saying that the length pq is given by mod of z2 minus z1 so as an application of this formula we can see that if a b c these are the three points given to us and it is given that these are collinear then we will have a b plus b c is equal to a c and to prove this result we can use that z mod of z1 minus z2 it means distance between z1 and z2 plus z2 minus z3 mod it means distance between z2 and z3 that is equal to uh, z1 minus z3 mod that is this length a c so if these three points are given to us in this first question these are the three points given to us and we have to prove that these are collinear so suppose we mark these points as z1 z2 and z3 and we calculate the value of mod of z1 minus z2 mod of z1 minus z3 and mod of z2 minus z3 when we calculate all these three values we are getting the answers over here it is z1 minus z2 is equal to square root 10 we will obtain z2 minus z3 is 2 root 10 and last is z1 minus z3 mod it is 3 root 10 then we can see that this condition holds over here that is z1 minus z2 plus z2 minus z3 is equal to z1 minus z3 and this thing proves that and this thing proves that these three points these are collinear these three points are collinear next we have is the equation of the perpendicular bisector so suppose we are saying that we have two points one is this point p corresponding to the number z1 and this is the point q whose affix is uh, z2 and uh, we have a point r over here which is moving in such a way that its distance from the point we are saying its distance from the point this pz it is always fixed so what we are trying to say is that if we have two points suppose p and q i am saying and i have to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector so I am talking about the locus of the points over here and what is the property over here that if you consider any point on this line their distance from P and Q it will be same that this length will be equal to this this length will be equal to this this length will be equal to this so we are talking about any point Z over here we are saying this point it is Z1 this point it is Z2 we are calculating any point z such that distance of p r is equal to distance of q r so if both these distances they are equal we are saying p r is equal to q r then we can write it in the form we have seen from the distance formula that distance is z minus z1 is equal to mod of z minus z2 and we can write this term in the form it is z we can write it in this so how we are getting this term is we are saying the condition we have is that mod of z minus z1 that is equal to mod of z minus z2 if we square the both sides of this equation we obtain z minus z1 into z minus z1 bar that is equal to z minus z2 into z minus z bar conjugate minus z2 conjugate now if we multiply these terms we obtain it is z z bar minus z 
z1 bar minus z1 z bar plus z1 z1 bar that is equal to the terms over here we have it is z z bar minus z z2 bar then it is minus z2 z bar and last term we have it is plus z2 into z2 bar now look at these terms over here this z z bar gets cancelled these terms z1 z1 bar it is mod of z1 square and uh, these terms we are doing z2 z2 bar this is mod of z2 square so on adjusting these terms we obtain the equation of this line in this form that it is z times z1 bar minus z2 bar plus z conjugate into z1 minus z2 is equal to mod of z1 square minus z2 square so based upon this we have this following problem so the points are given over here or these numbers are given it is 3 plus 4 iota and minus 5 plus 6 iota and we have to find the perpendicular bisector joining these two points of the line joining these two points so we are saying this is the value of z1 is 3 plus 4 iota and z2 is minus 5 plus 6 iota and we are trying to calculate a point z which is always at a constant different distance from these two so we have mod of z minus 3 plus 4 iota should be equal to mod of z minus 5 minus 5 plus 6 iota now if we multiply these terms as we have done over here we obtain the final answer in the form that the equation is 8 plus 2 iota z plus 8 minus 2 iota z bar plus 36 is equal to zero so you have to solve this equation you have to square these terms after that you multiply these terms as we have done over here and after adjusting these values you will obtain the answer in this form you will obtain the answer in this form and this is the required equation of the bisector of these two uh, the line joining these two points next is the section formula so we are saying suppose we have the points p corresponding to z1 and q corresponding to z2 and we are having another point r on the line joining p and q and it is dividing this line p q in the ratio m is to n then we have the value of this z or the coordinates of this point z they are given by m1 z2 plus m2 z1 divided by m1 plus m2 if this point r it is dividing this line p q internally and if it is dividing externally then the formula for z we have it is m1 z2 minus m2 z1 divided by m1 minus m2 so if it is dividing in the ratio m is to n externally over here we are saying these are the points p and q and this point r it is dividing in the ratio m is to n externally and this r is dividing in the ratio m is to n internally so these are the coordinates of the points that we have so we are saying that r will be a midpoint if the coordinates of this point are they are z1 plus z2 by 2 that is the ratio m is to m1 is to m2 we are saying it is 1 is to 1 so we get it is 1 into z1 plus 1 into z2 over 2 so that is equal to z1 plus z2 by 2 so these are the this is the affix corresponding to the point r and from the basic results of coordinate geometry we know that if these are if these will be the points z1 z2 z3 these are the affixes of the vertices of a triangle then the centroid will be given by z1 plus z2 plus z3 by 3 so this thing we can also prove how we can prove this we are saying we will have a triangle the coordinates are let z1 z2 z3 the midpoint of these two will be z2 plus z3 by 2 
after that we are joining these two points z1 and this point and we are saying that we have to find the centroid of the triangle and the centroid it divides this line in the ratio 2 is to 1 so if we uh, use the section formula we will obtain that the centroid of this triangle it is z1 plus z2 plus z3 by 3 next is if z1 z2 z3 z4 are the fixes of the vertices of a parallelogram taken in the order then z1 plus z3 is equal to z2 plus z4 so we are saying we have a parallelogram over here these are the coordinates we are saying z1 z2 z3 and z4 now if we draw the diagonals over here if we draw the diagonals over here then corresponding to these two points we will have the coordinates of the diagonal then corresponding to these two points we will have the this coordinates of this uh, point where these diagonals they meet when we equate both these values we get the result in the form that z1 plus z3 is equal to z2 plus z4 next we have is the formula for the area of the triangle so we are saying that if z1 z2 z3 these represent the vertices of a triangle these are affixes of the vertices of a triangle it is a z1 b z2 and c z3 then the area of the triangle it is given by this formula that it is 1 by 4 determinant of z1 z1 bar 1 z2 z2 bar 1 and z3 z3 bar and 1 so you must remember these formulas because these are directly applicable for your uh, the questions that may be asked so this is the formula for the area of a triangle next we are writing the equation of the straight line in the parametric form so suppose we are saying that uh, we have the points z1 and z2 and we want to find the equation of the line joining these two points so suppose we are saying this is the line the required line and there is a point z over here which divides it in the ratio of t uh, 1 minus t into is to t then the coordinates of this point z they will be given by t times z1 plus 1 minus t times z2 divided by t plus 1 minus t so this gives us this implies us that the equation of the line we have that is z is equal to t z1 plus 1 minus t z2 so this is the equation of the line so this is the equation of the line joining the points z1 and with the fixes z1 and z next we have is the non parametric form of this equation so we are saying that if we have the point whose affix is z1 and z2 and we want to find the equation of the line then the equation of the line it is given by this formula this is basically we are getting from the area of a triangle whose sides are z1 uh, z z1 and z2 as it is a straight line so the area of this triangle will be zero so we are saying the determinant of this value is zero and we obtain the equation of the line in this form when you open this determinant you will obtain the equation of the line in this form now the another method to derive this equation is we are saying that we have already seen that in the parametric form the equation of this line it is uh, z is equal to t times z1 plus 1 minus t times z2 now we want to eliminate this parameter t so we are writing this in the form it is z minus z2 is equal to t times z1 minus z2 and this thing implies us that z minus z2 bar that is equal to t times z1 minus z2 bar bar means we are talking about conjugate over here so this equation can be written in the form this equation gives us that z conjugate minus z2 conjugate is equal to t times z1 conjugate minus z2 conjugate so if we obtain the value of if we write the value of t from both these equations and equate that value we obtain that z1 minus z2 over z1 uh, z minus z2 minus over z1 minus z2 is equal to z bar minus z2 bar divided by z1 bar minus z2 bar and this term can be written in this determinant form we are saying this equation this can be written in the determinant form 
in this way and this determinant on this determinant if we apply the operation that row 1 approaches row 1 plus row 3 and row 2 approaches row 2 plus row 3 we obtain the required determinant that we have over here we are saying this is the required determinant that we have so we are saying this will represent the equation of the straight line joining the points z1 and z another way to find this equation is we are saying the points we have it is a z1 b z2 and p is any point z over here so we will have the value of argument of z minus z1 over z2 minus z1 this will be 0 or pi it means we are saying that this value is purely real and if this value is real so we get that z minus z1 over z2 minus z1 that is equal to z minus z1 bar divided by z2 minus z1 conjugate or we are saying it is bar and this is just equivalent to the condition that we have already obtained and this is equivalent to this determinant this thing we have seen in our previous slide that these this is the equation of the line uh, joining the points z1 and z2 now next we calculate the equation of the line in the general form so we have already obtained the equation of the line in this form this form we have already obtained now if we multiply this equation with iota we multiply this whole equation with iota the answer we get we have multiplied these terms with iota the answer we obtain it is in this form you can check at your own we have multiplied these terms with iota and on adjusting these values we get the answer in this form so this is just another kind of form we are talking about that we have written this equation we have written this equation by multiplying with iota we are multiplying this equation in this way and we are writing that this term iota into z1 minus z2 which will be a constant term minus iota into this we are writing it as a and minus 2 imaginary part of z1 z2 bar we are writing it as b and we obtain this is the general form of the equation of a straight line that it is a bar z plus a z bar plus b is equal to 0. So this is the general form of a straight line and over here we have the value of a that we have it is a complex number and the value of b we have it is a real number this a we have it is a complex number and the value of b we have it is a real number. So this is the general form of the equation of a line uh, corresponding to any point z we are talking about are calculating the slope of the line that is represented over here so we are saying if the line the equation of the line it is a bar z plus a z bar plus b is equal to 0 and suppose it is passing through the point z1 and z2 so we will have a bar z1 plus a z1 bar plus b is equal to 0 next we have is a bar z2 plus a z2 bar plus b is equal to 0 we are saying that this equation that is given to us it is passing through the point z1 and z2 so from these two equations if we subtract these values we obtain that a bar z1 minus z2 plus a into z2 minus z1 bar that is equal to 0 so this gives us that z1 minus z2 over z1 bar minus z2 bar that is equal to minus of a by a bar this gives us the formula for the complex slope so we are saying that the complex slope we have that is equal to minus of a over a conjugate this is equal to minus coefficient of z bar divided by coefficient of z a bar is the coefficient of z and a is the coefficient of z conjugate and if we have to calculate the real slope of the line we are talking about the real slope of the line this a bar z or a conjugate z plus a z conjugate plus b is equal to 0 then the real slope is given by minus real part of a over imaginary part of a 
now we have if alpha 1 and alpha 2 these are the complex slopes we are saying alpha 1 and alpha 2 are the complex slopes of two lines on the argand plane then we have to prove that the lines are perpendicular if alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is 0 and they are parallel if alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2. So, we are saying suppose we have two points we are saying it is z1 and z2 and these are the two points z3 and z4 these are the fixes of these points and uh, the slope the complex slope of this line we are saying z1 z2 it corresponds to alpha 1 and the slope over here the complex slope we have that is alpha 2 then the value of alpha 1 we have that is equal to z1 minus z2 over z1 bar minus z2 bar and value of alpha 2 we have that is equal to z3 minus z4 divided by z3 bar minus z4 bar now if the two lines they are perpendicular to each other if these two lines these are perpendicular to each other uh, then we have z1 minus z2 divided by mod of z1 minus z2 should be equal to z3 minus z4 upon z3 minus z4 mod e raised to the power iota pi by 2 it means we are saying in terms of vectors if we talk about this is just like this term we are saying this is just like the unit vector we are talking about and in this case we are saying that we have taken a complex number whose modulus is 1 whose modulus is 1 and whose direction or whose amplitude is same as that of z1 minus z2 similarly we are saying this complex number its modulus is 1 and as both these are perpendicular to each other both of these are perpendicular to each other so what we get is that if we multiply it with e raised to the power iota pi by 2 so we are saying that if we rotate this number if we rotate this number by an angle of pi by 2 in the clockwise direction we are saying we are rotating this number by an angle pi by 2 in the clockwise direction we are obtaining this number over here so we are saying that this line we are talking about we are rotating and we are obtaining this line over here so from this condition we are getting over here uh, if we square both sides of this equation if we square both sides of this equation we are scaring these values we are scaring these values we obtain uh, z1 minus z2 square divided by z1 minus z2 into z1 minus z2 bar is equal to z3 minus z4 square divided by z3 minus z4 into z3 minus z4 bar into e raised to the power iota pi and value of e raised to the power iota pi will be minus 1 this one value it gets cancelled over here this one value gets cancelled over here so what we are left with is we are left with this this term that z1 minus z2 over z1 minus z2 bar is equal to z1 minus z4 over z1 minus z4 bar minus 1 so this thing implies us what are these values equal to these values we are saying these are basically the values alpha 1 and alpha 2 so we obtain that alpha 1 is equal to minus of alpha 2 so this implies us that alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to 0 so this thing implies us that alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to 0 next is if these two lines these are parallel to each other then we will have the condition in this form if these lines these are parallel to each other so we are saying over here we have e raised to the power 0 e raised to the power 0 means basically we are saying it is 1 both these numbers uh, their amplitude we are talking about we are talking about the amplitude of both these numbers it is same so on scaring these numbers we get these values and on solving this value just as we have solved in the previous case we are solving over here we have scared these values we have used the formula that mod of z square is equal to z into z bar we get the answer in this form and by substituting the final values we obtain alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2 so these are the two conditions that we have to prove next is the equation of a line parallel to a line a bar z 
plus a z bar plus b is equal to zero is a bar z plus a z bar plus lambda equal to zero. Where lambda we are saying this is any real number. And if we have to write any equation which is perpendicular to this equation, that will be a bar z minus a z bar plus iota lambda is equal to zero. Where lambda we are saying it is any real number. So these are the equations. This is the equation perpendicular to this equation, and this is the equation of the line parallel to the given line. Next is length of perpendicular from a given point on a given line. We are given over here a point. We are saying P Z one. This is any point given to us, and a line is given to us. This is the equation of the line A bar Z plus A Z bar plus B is equal to zero. We are saying this is the line, and we have a point given over here. It is P Z. This is the point corresponding to the uh, complex number Z one, and this is the equation of the line. This is suppose this is the line. Then we have to find the length of the perpendicular. So we are saying that if we drop a perpendicular from this point P on this line, and we are saying this is M, and this corresponding point it is Z two, then we have to find the equation or the length of this perpendicular. So to tackle these kind of problems in geometry, what we do is we are saying that suppose the first condition we will have over here is that this point will lie on this line. So it will satisfy the equation of this line. And second thing we have is if we find the equation of this line, we are talking about this line P M, that will be perpendicular to the given equation. We will have two conditions, and using these conditions, we can find this point Z two, and then we can we have the point Z one and Z two, and we can calculate the distance between Z one and Z two. So the first thing we are going to do over here is this point. M Z two it lies on this line, so it will satisfy this equation over here. So we will have A bar Z two plus A Z two bar plus B is equal to zero. And second condition we are saying is that uh, both these lines, this P Z P M and this given line, they are perpendicular to each other. So we will have the slope of this given line, the slope of this given line that will be uh, Z one minus Z two. Uh, this line this perpendicular p z1 m z2 we are saying that will be this over z1 bar minus z2 bar and slope of the line we are having over here from this equation we will have this is plus minus a over a bar we are having the slope of two lines and the condition we have is that both these lines these are perpendicular to each other So if these lines these are perpendicular to each other, so their slope should be sum of their slope should be zero. So on solving this, we will obtain if we take the LCM over here, we will get a bar z1 minus a bar z2 minus a z1 bar plus a z2 bar is equal to zero. Now we want to let calculate the length PM. So the length PM we have. We are saying this length PM. It is basically mod of z1 minus z2. We want to calculate this value. So the equation we have now it is in this form, and we want to calculate the value of. We have this equation now, and uh, we want to calculate the value over here. This equation, uh, this value we want to calculate, and another term we have over here it is this. That z2 satisfies this equation. So from uh, by using these two. Equations by using these two equations, we want to calculate the value of mod of z1 minus z2. So to calculate this value, uh, we are adjusting the terms over here. We are writing it is a bar z1 plus a z1 bar. We are saying this is a bar z1 plus a z1 bar. It means it is minus sign over here. So we are writing it is minus two a z1. Bar, and uh, then we have the term minus a bar z two plus a z two bar is equal to zero. Now, from this given equation, uh, from this equation, we are saying we can substitute the value of a bar z two 
minus of a bar z2 we can write in place of this it is a z2 bar plus b so this whole equation will become a bar z1 plus a z1 bar and the next term we will have it is minus 2 a z1 bar plus a z2 bar plus b plus a z2 bar is equal to 0. So this will become 2 times a z2 bar and this term will be removed. So this value this implies us this implies us that a bar z1 this term we are saying we are talking about a bar z1 plus a z1 bar plus b we are collecting these terms over here plus a z1 bar plus b that is equal to what we are left with over here is these two terms so it is equal to uh, we write two common we write a common and we are left with this uh, z2 bar minus z1 bar so we are writing this in the form we are writing it is over here that if we take the mod over here if we take the value mod over here we obtain the answer in this form and uh, on taking the modulus value we are talking about this value mod of z1 minus z2 we are saying this is pm mod of z1 z2 we are saying it is pm so the value of pm the length of this perpendicular we have it is in this form so these calculations you can try at your own now and you can obtain the answer in this case that the length of the perpendicular pm we have it is equal to this next is the equation of a circle so we are saying the circle is a we are saying we have a fixed point first and then we have a fixed radius and we are talking about the locus of all the points at a distance r units from this given point c so if we are talking about that uh, any point z is over here any point z it lies over here and the center of this circle we are saying suppose it is the point z0 z0 means we are talking about the coordinates if we are writing they are x comma y and the corresponding complex number we are saying it is x plus iota y or in this case it is x0 y0 x0 plus iota y0 so the distance between these two points we are saying that is distance between z and z0 it is fixed and it is equal to r so this equation that uh, mod of z minus z naught this will represent a circle whose center is z naught and whose radius is r and if we want to calculate the general equation of the circle it is of this form that it is z into z bar plus a bar z plus a z bar plus b is equal to 0 where a we are saying is a complex number b is a real number and it is having the center at minus a and radius is square root of mod of a square minus b so if we want to uh, find the general equation of circle uh, we are starting with the equation of circle with the center z0 and radius r we are saying so the, we are writing it is mod of z minus z0 it is equal to r so if we square both sides we obtain z minus z naught into z bar minus z naught bar that is equal to r square this implies us z z bar minus z z naught uh, we are writing it is minus z into z naught bar minus z naught into z bar plus z naught into z naught bar that is equal to r square this equation if we substitute in this equation we are saying if we substitute a is equal to minus of z0 and we substitute b is equal to mod of z0 square minus r square we are saying this value we have it is mod of z0 square if we shift this r on this side it will become minus r square is equal to 0 and this whole value we are writing it is b this term we have it is z into z bar then we have it is uh, if we take minus z not common we will obtain or we are writing it in this form we will obtain it is uh, this z not is there minus sign is there so we are writing plus a z and the it is uh, z not bar over here so it is a bar z plus a z bar 
plus b is equal to 0. So, this is the general form of the circle that we obtain in this way, where we are saying the center of the circle it is represented with this complex number minus a and the radius of the circle it is given by square root of mod of z naught square minus b or we are writing it is square root of mod of a square minus b. So, this is the general equation of the circle. Next is the rules to find the center and radius of the circle whose equation is given. So, whenever we have to find the radius and center of the circle, the first step we are going to do over here, it is that we make the coefficient of z into z bar equal to 1. The general form of the circle, general equation of the circle, the coefficient of z z bar is 1 and we make the right hand side equal to 0 and we make the right hand side equal to 0. Next step we have is the center of the circle will be minus a that it, it is the coefficient negative the coefficient of z bar and the radius will be given by this formula. So, the important part over here is that we must make the coefficient of z z bar equal to 1. We are saying coefficient of this term we have to make 1. After that we can obtain the value of a and from a and constant term we can find the radius of the circle. So, the question is given over here. Find the center and radius of the circle. This is the equation given to us. So, to write, find this we have to write it in the general form. We are writing it is z z bar plus 3 plus iota bar by 2 times z plus 3 plus iota by 2 times z bar minus 7 by 2 is equal to 0. So, the value of a we have it is minus of uh, this is 3 it is minus of 3 plus iota by 2 and the value of the radius will be the value of the radius will be square root of mod of minus 3 plus iota by 2 square minus the constant term the constant term over here it is minus 7 by 2 so on solving this the value of modulus over here that will be 9 by 4 plus 1 by 4 and these two negative signs will become plus so it is plus 7 by 2 whole square root. So, the answer we obtain that is equal to square root of 6. So, we are saying that the circle that we have it has the center at a is equal to minus of 3 plus iota by 2 and it has the radius is equal to square root of 6. Next we have is the equation of the circle passing through three non-collinear points. So, suppose we are saying that uh, there are three, we have three non-collinear points. We are saying this is the point A, then we have this is the point B and we have the point C and we want to find the equation of the circle which passes through these three points. So, suppose we are saying there is another point P, it corresponds to Z, corresponding to A we have the complex number Z1, for this we have Z2 and for C we have it is Z3. Now, what we will have is that the angle formed, we are talking about this angle APB, suppose this angle it is theta, this should be equal to the angle formed at C, this is we are saying both these angles should be same because both of these angles are corresponding to the same chord AB. Now, if we want to calculate the angle theta, this angle we are talking about and once we are calculating the angle, this angle theta. So, this angle theta will be given by uh, Z2 minus, and this angle will be given by Z2 minus Z over Z1 minus Z that is equal to b p over a p into e raise to the power iota theta and if we are calculating the angle using uh, this theta we will have z 2 minus z 3 over z 1 minus z 3 
that is equal to b c over a c e raised to the power iota theta. Now, if we divide both these equations, we are talking about if we divide both these equations, we obtain z minus z1 over z minus z2 into z2 minus z3 over z1 minus z3. This is equal to uh, we will have a p over b p into b c over a c and this is a this number we are saying it is a, a real number. So, we are having the condition that this whole term we are saying the product of these two terms it should be a real number. So, we are saying if 4 points z1, z2, z3, z4 are concyclic then we have this term is real or we are saying the argument of this term should be pi or 0. The condition for any 4 given numbers to be concyclic. Next we have is the equation of the circle in the diameter form. So, diameter form means we are saying now we are given we are being given the points A that is corresponding to the number complex number z1 and this is the point B it has the representation in complex form as z2. These two points are given to us and it is given that this A B is the diameter of the circle. So, we want to find the equation of the circle. Now, to calculate the equation of the circle, suppose we are saying we have a point over here it is P and any general point Z is there on this circle. If we join this A, P and P, B, we will have the slope of this line P, A we are saying, the slope of this line P, A and the slope of this line P, B, their sum should be 0. Why? Because the angle that will be formed at this point. This is angle in semicircle. This is angle in semicircle. So, it means this angle will be equal to this angle will be 90 degrees. It means both these lines are perpendicular to each other. And if two lines are perpendicular to each other, the sum of complex slope, the sum of the complex slope that will be equal to 0. Now, the slope of the line corresponding to this we are saying the slope the complex slope of p a we have it is z minus z 1 over z bar minus z 1 bar and the complex slope of this z p b we have it is z minus z 2 over z bar minus z 2 bar. Now, the sum of the slopes should be 0. So, what we obtain from this is that the sum of both these values should be 0. So, by taking the LCM over here, we obtain the equation of the circle in the diameter form in this way. So, we are saying this is the equation of the circle in the diameter form where the endpoints of the diameter they are z1 and z2. Uh, next, we have given some advanced forms of the equations of the circles. So, first is in the equation of all circles which are orthogonal to these two circles. So, we will not go into the details of these equations. Uh, we will discuss these in our uh, lectures related to some advanced lectures related to complex numbers. So, at this moment you can just look at give a uh, reading to these equations. So, we are saying these are the two circles we are talking about. These are the equations of the two circles. And this is the equation of the circle which is orthogonal to both these. This is the uh, equation of the circles which are orthogonal to both these circles. Uh, what are orthogonal circles? We will discuss in our next lectures. Uh, next, this is the equation of the Apollonian circle. So, this is the equation given over here. So, it is uh, a, a brief definition of this is given over here that it is the circle with the join of Z2. Uh, z3 and z4 as the diameter where z3 is given by this value and z4 is given by this value. The details of these will will discuss in our later lectures some advanced lectures that we will prepare related to the complex numbers. Next is the circular arc. 
so the equation of the circular arc it is given by this formula that argument of z minus z1 over z minus z2 is equal to alpha where we are saying this z1 and z2 these are the points which are the uh, points from which this chord is formed z1 z2 these are the points from which this chord these are the end points of the chord and they subtend an angle alpha at any point on the arc so we are saying that if alpha is equal to plus minus pi by 2 then basically we are saying that the circular arc we are saying it will become the semicircle and the line joining these to the chord that will be in this case that will be the diameter and if we are saying alpha is equal to 0 then it means that we are talking about the straight line passing through the points z1 and z2 we know that the circle if we talk about an infinite circle then it will be just a straight line so we are saying when alpha is equal to 0 then we obtain a straight line through the point z1 and z2 and the last condition we have mentioned over here is that any equation of this form that mod of z minus z1 square plus mod of z minus z2 square plus equal to k this will represent a circle if the value of k we have it is greater than equal to 1 by 2 mod of z1 minus z2 scale. So these are some other forms of the circles that we have. So you should remember or just give a reading to these formulas and they might be useful in your objective type questions. Next is equation of a parabola. Suppose we are considering a parabola over here. These are the axes we are talking about. These are the axes we have and this is the parabola this is the point p we are considering z over here this is corresponding to the complex number z and this is the point s we are saying it is coordinate there a plus iota 0 and uh, the directrix we have it is over here now if we draw a perpendicular from this point we get this point m and this is perpendicular at this point if we join these two points we will have the line in this way the equation of this directrix we have it is z plus z bar is equal to minus of 2a or we are saying that z plus z bar plus 2a is equal to 0 and uh, this point we already have and this point p we have it is z so if uh, this figure we are saying it is a parabola then we know by the definition of parabola we have s p that is equal to pm so the value of sp where that is equal to mod of z minus a is the real number over here and that is equal to pm so we are talking about the distance of the point z from this line so it is mod of z plus z bar plus 2a divided by 2 so if we solve these equations we square these values we square both these values we can write them in the form z minus a into z bar minus a that is equal to z plus z bar plus 2a into z bar plus z plus 2a divided by 4 so on cross multiplying and solving these values uh, we obtain that the equation of the parabola that we will have equation of the parabola we will have it is in this form that it is z into z bar minus 4a into z plus z bar is equal to 1 by 2 z square plus uh, conjugate of z square and the directrix we have it is z plus z bar plus 2a is equal to 0 and a belongs to r so this is the equation of the parabola next is equation of the ellipse so as in case of parabola now we are saying that this is the ellipse shown over here these are the two focus we have and these are corresponding to z1 and z2 any point on the ellipse we are saying it is z so by the definition of the ellipse we have sp we are saying this line sp plus s dash p this should be equal to two times a so we are writing the value of sp it is mod of z minus z1 plus mod of z minus z2 these are the lengths we are talking over here the length of this sp and this is the length of this s dash p 
the sum of these two values this should be equal to 2a where we are saying that the value of 2a should be greater than mod of z minus z1 because the eccentricity we know it should be less than 1. So we are saying that the point z describes an ellipse having the foci z1 and z2 and a belongs to r positive that is it is a positive real number. Next is the equation of the hyperbola. So in case of hyperbola we know that these are the points we are considering over here the focus two foci we are talking about these two values we are saying and this is the point pz we have taken on the hyperbola it is any arbitrary point we are saying then by the definition we have it is s p minus s dash p is equal to 2a when we substitute the values over here s p is mod of z minus z1 s dash p is mod of z minus z2 this length 2a is equal to this so this is the equation of the hyperbola and the condition we have over here it is uh, that uh, 2a should be less than mod of z1 minus z2 and the eccentricity we have in this case it is greater than 1. So these are the def, uh, equations of ellipse, parabola and hyperbola uh, in terms of complex numbers. Next is let z1 is equal to 10 plus 6 iota, z2 is equal to 4 plus 6 iota where iota is equal to uh, square root of minus 1. If z is a complex number such that the argument of z minus z1 over z minus z2 is pi by 4, we have to prove this result. So we are being given two complex numbers. These are the two complex numbers z1 and z2 given to us. And it is given that the angle they are forming at any point z, it is we are saying we have two complex numbers one is z1 another is z2 we are taking any complex number z over here we are joining these two points and the angle they are forming over here that is equal to pi by 4 and we have to prove this result this result clearly what we have to prove is it is z minus this result we can write it is in the form of mod of z minus z0 is equal to r so this is representing the equation of a circle. So, what we have to prove is that uh, this point z, the locus of this point z, it is basically a circle whose center is 7 plus 9 iota and whose radius is equal to 3 root 2. Now, clearly if the angle between z and z, z this these two lines we are saying, uh, we are talking about z and z1 the line joining z and z2 it is pi by 4 it means these three points we are talking about these are not collinear points so there must be a circle passing through these three points we will have a circle which passes through these three points and we are naming these points as a b and uh, suppose this point we are writing it is b and uh, this third point we are writing it is c we are naming these points as a b and C and the circle we have drawn suppose the center of that circle it is at this point and it is O. So clearly if we join these points B with O and C with O the angle at this point this will be 90 degree that is pi by 2 that is double of this angle because we are talking about this chord BC. So the angle formed on the circle uh, that will be half the angle formed on the center. So, this angle BOC we have it is equal to 90 degree. So, what we can write from this, suppose the coordinates of this point O, it is Z0. So, we will have Z1 minus Z0 over Z2 minus Z0 that is equal to OC by OB e raised to the power iota pi by 2, where pi by 2 is the angle between these two lines. And uh, this value we are saying e raised to the power iota pi by 2 this value will be equal to iota and th both these o b and o c will be equal because both of these are equal to radius this value gets cancelled so what we obtain is that z1 minus z0 that is equal to iota times z2 minus z0 so this implies us 
that 10 plus 6 iota minus z naught is equal to iota times 4 plus 6 iota minus z naught and by solving this we obtain the value of z naught is equal to uh, 16 plus 2 iota divided by 1 minus iota and on rationalizing this value we are multiplying and dividing it with 1 plus iota we obtain the value of z naught is equal to 7 plus 9 iota this is the value of z naught that we have next we require the value of radius that will be o c suppose we are talking about any of with any of these numbers we can calculate the radius so that will be equal to mod of z naught minus z1 and on solving on doing the calculations over here we have shown that this value comes out to be equal to 3 root 2 this value it comes out to be equal to 3 root 2 so we have the value of the center of the circle we have the value of the radius of the circle so the equation we have it is mod of z minus 7 minus 9 iota is equal to 3 root 2 where this value we are saying 7 minus 9 iota it is the center of this circle and 3 root 2 it is the radius of this circle and this is what we have to prove next is if mod of z minus 2 plus iota is less than equal to 2 mod of z minus 2 plus iota is less than equal to 2 we have to find the greatest and the least value of mod z so this thing this equation we are saying this is basically representing the interior of a circle so this is representing a circle whose center is we can write it is mod of 2 minus iota is less than equal to 2 so we are if we represent this circle it is uh, this point we have it is 2 minus iota will be somewhere over here and if we plot this circle this circle it is shown over here this is the circle we are saying the center of this circle it is 2 minus iota the radius of this circle it is 2 so if we plot this figure we are saying that we have the circle in this form now we are saying what is the minimum value of mod z so what is basically z z is any point on this circle that may be any point on this circle that may be here 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 so z is basically the locus of all these points the circle we are saying the locus of all these z it is representing this circle so we are talking about the greatest and the least value of mod z we are not talking about the greatest and least value of z because z is a complex number so we are talking about mod z so if this point if we join this point o with the center of the circle c if we join these two points we obtain that we are joining this point O we, are, we have drawn a line which is passing through the center of this circle then this point A we have over here this will be the point nearest to the circle this is the point nearest to the origin and this point B this is the point farthest point from O from the origin so when we are talking about this nearest point and we want to calculate the value of mod z so basically we are saying the least value least value of mod z that will be equal to o a that will be equal to o c minus a c now the value of o c means we are talking about the distance of the origin from the point 2 comma minus 1 so the distance will be square root of 5 minus the distance AC is the radius of this circle and the radius of this circle is given to be 2 units so we are saying the least distance we have the least distance we have that is OA that is equal to square root 5 minus 2 and the maximum distance we have the maximum value we have maximum value we have it is this OA plus a b so that will be equal to 
we are saying it is root 5 minus 2 plus this length it is 2 plus the next length it is 2 so the value we obtain that is equal to root 5 plus 2 so we are saying that the maximum value of mod z maximum value of mod z will be ob and the minimum value of mod z will be o a so its answer is root 5 minus 2 and this answer is root 5 plus 2 next we have is in the argon plane the vector z is equal to 4 minus 3 iota is turned in the clockwise sense through 180 degree so if we plot this point it is 4 minus 3 iota it will be somewhere over here this point we are saying it is z is equal to 4 minus 3 iota this is 4 over here and this is 3 over here now it is being given that this vector is rotated clockwise through an angle of 180 degree so if it is rotated clockwise by an angle of 180 degree we obtain a point over here and this point will be uh, z e raised to the power minus iota pi because it is clockwise rotation by an angle of 180 degree then it is stretched three times if this vector is stretched three times or this point it is stretched three times we are saying it will reach over here stretch three times means that the modulus of this number will be uh, thrice the modulus of the given number so we are saying the answer we will have it is three times z e raised to the power minus iota pi so this is the required number so we are writing it is three times z is 4 minus 3 iota and e raised to the power minus pi it is minus 1 so the answer we obtain this is equal to this new number that we will have that will be equal to minus 12 plus 9 iota so this is the new number that we will have this is the new complex number that we will obtain next is if mod of z plus minus b by z mod that is equal to a then we have to calculate the greatest and the least values of mod z we have to calculate the least and the greatest value of mod z now we know that mod of z plus minus b by z this will be greater than equal to mod of z minus mod of b by z so we obtain that mod of z minus mod of b by mod of z whole mod uh, this value will be less than equal to a and this implies us that minus a is less than equal to mod z minus mod b by mod z is less than equal to a so this equation implies us that mod of z minus mod of b by mod of z is less than equal to a and this implies us that mod of z square minus a times mod z minus b is less than equal to 0 and this equation this implies us the roots of this equation we will have it is a minus square root of a square plus 4 mod b by 2 is less than equal to mod z is less than equal to a plus square root of a square plus 4 times mod b by 2 now we know that the value of mod it is always greater than equal to 0 so this thing implies us that 0 is less than equal to mod z is less than equal to a plus square root of a square plus 4 times mod b by 2 uh, this is the equation that we have mentioned over here now the second inequality we have from this it is this part we are talking about that mod of z minus mod of b by mod of z is greater than equal to mod minus of a we are talking about it is greater than equal to minus of a so on multiplying these terms we get the equality in this form and this implies us that the value of mod z is greater than equal to this value 
so by combining by if we look at both the equations 1 and 2 we are talking about this is equation 1 and this is equation 2 we get that the value of mod z it lies between these two values so this gives us the greatest and the least values of the mod z next is find the maximum and the minimum value of the mod z satisfying this condition so if we substitute b is equal to 1 and a is equal to 2 in this previous result we will obtain that the maximum and minimum values of mod z they are 2 plus root uh, it is 4 plus 4 it is 8 by 2 and 2 minus 2 plus root 8 by 2 so the answer we obtain it is 1 plus root 2 and the answer we obtain over here it is minus 1 plus square root of 2 similarly in this next question we have it is z mod of z plus 4 by z is equal to 2 so in this case we are substituting a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 4 so when we substitute these values we obtain that the maximum and minimum values of mod z they are of this form and these are the required maximum and minimum values of the mod z these are the required values so we are directly using the previous result so you should uh, keep that result in mind for solving these kind of problems